Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 2022 to 2023 ASB Candidates Forum. And now, can we have our presidential candidate, Amy Okuma, introduce herself, please? Hi, my name is Amy Okuma, and I'm running for president. And for the vice president position, we have Truth. Hi, I'm Truth Ta, and I'm running to be vice president. Can we have Josella, please introduce herself? Hi, I'm Josella de Guzman, and I'm running for Finance and Records. Awesome. And next, our VP of Special Events candidates. Let's start with Akasha. Hi, I'm Akasha Les, and I'm running for Vice President of Special Events. Shally. Hi, my name is Shally Markavi, and I'm running for VP of Special Events. Moving on to VP of Athletics, let's start with Jenny. Hi, I'm Jenny, and I'm running for VP of Athletics. On to Kaylee. Hi, guys. My name is Kaylee Simmons. I'm running for VP of Athletics. And Louie. Hi, my name is Louie Cabrera, and I'm running for VP of Athletics. Going on to outreach candidates, let's start with Nuha. Hi, my name is Nuha Khan, and I'm running for your Vice President of Student Outreach. Prasida. Hi, I'm Prasida, and I'm running for VP of Student Outreach. And lastly, communications, Amanda. Hi, I'm Amanda, and I'm running for VP of Communications. So for a first question to everybody, when dealing with criticism about your work, how do you intend to respond to it? After the 30 seconds, we'll start with the presidential candidates down to communications. Let's start with Amy. So I think when it comes to criticism, professionalism is really important because obviously if you react in an immature way, people won't take your response seriously. So I think it's important to be really direct with the way you respond with criticism while being professional at the same time. And I also think um, with criticism, it's good to just take it with a grain of salt because some, you know, obviously everyone has a vastly different opinion. So one person might think something is criticism while someone else might think of it differently. So if the criticism is like wide, like everyone agrees, then I guess it's something that you should change and something should work to change for. But if obviously if the criticism is just coming from one person, I think it's important to take it with a grain of salt because, you know, obviously everyone has different opinions. Thank you, Amy. And then let's move on to Chuk. Um, I want to add on to like Amy, like I agree with her when it comes to taking it with a grain of salt, because when it comes to um, taking on a leadership position, you have to be able to adjust to everyone that like you will have to work with. And um, there's always a reason why people criticize you is because there's always something to fix. And so I feel like um, if you just take it with a grain of salt and like try to see their point of view and where um where they stand and see like what the problem is, I can you can try to adjust it and um, see what can work for everyone and find a, a middle ground. Thanks, Chuk. And now Gisela. Um, I will address it and like keep it professional, of course, and also maybe keep it in mind when um, planning other events in the future and like not take it to heart since like everyone like has different opinions and like put myself in their shoes and how they're seeing it. So like, yeah, thank you. Thanks, Josella. And now Akasha. I wouldn't try to take it to the heart because criticism is like something that you're probably always going to face. And there's always going to be something better that you can do in situations. So I would try to take that criticism and use it for the better rather than take it in a negative way. And if it's a very large issue, of course, you would address it to everybody, but of course, dress it in a positive way and a logical way so it's not seeming bias based on yourself. Awesome, thank you Akasha, and now Shally. So to me, criticism is not just criticism, it's constructive. And I feel that taking in whatever people have to say, especially with my position as special events, or if I were elected, you really need to listen to people because you're catering to them. You have to be aware with how you react with them by being professional and communicative. And I also agree with Josella by putting yourself in their position. Thank you. And moving on to our athletics candidates, let's start with Jenny. So when dealing with criticism, I personally think I'll, I'll take it positive, positively because they're like literally thinking so hard about you. So like your impact is basically so big that they have to think about you. 
to criticize you. So I personally think that if you just take it positively, that basically means they care about you. But even if they don't like you, they're you're literally in their mind every single day. They're just fan behavior at that rate. So like uh, I personally think if you just take it positively, and you don't you, you generally don't need to adjust to it too. If you don't like the criticism, don't do it. If you think it actually makes sense to you, then do it. I don't think it's personally a big thing. So I think taking it positively is the best way for me. Thanks, Jenny. And now on to Kaylee. I think criticism is really good because uh, um, everyone has their own opinion and judgment about your work, obviously, right? And it will, you should take it with the ground of, um, you shouldn't take it very cold hearted and take it lightly because it just weighs to improve your work and how to handle a certain situation. And you just have to stay professional and kind and kind of put yourself in their position because ha obviously having a leadership position, they obviously think that you all obviously like make the best decisions and um, you just have to learn to adapt with it and you could take it lightly or you could act upon it. And just ways to better your work and how you view about your school. Thank you. Thank you, Kaylee. And now Louie. So in my opinion, I take criticism as a given because out of everybody, there's always going to be at least one person that disagrees with your own idea. So what you gotta do, well, for what I think is you gotta be calm because of course they would also want to reflect that calm when interacting with you and then just get down to their level and just try to understand what parts they don't like and then just continue to work positively towards a solution. Awesome, thank you guys. And now moving on to our outreach candidates, let's start with Nuha. Yeah, so I take criticism as a very, very good thing. I actually take it as a blessing. With my position as student VP of outreach, if I initiate a project and if my peers and my classmates and if overall the school isn't happy with it, I would do my best to listen to them and understand why they are unhappy with it and maybe even amend that project, take it back. And I'm also a very understanding person. So at the, at the end of the day, if it doesn't make sense for me to do what I did, or if the criticism is just blatant and it's out of hatred or whatever the situation might be, I promise to like do my best to understand what's happening with it. And that's why criticism is a good thing because people will voice their opinions and you just have to respond to it in a very professional and a very calm manner as I'm sure other candidates have said so far. Thank you and on to Placida. Um, I think I really agree with what Jenny was saying about being really positive when somebody gives you criticism. I think that there's always like us, like, you know, everybody makes like small mistakes. And I think there's always something that we can fix about ourselves, like when we're working in a team. So I think when somebody gives you like really valid criticism, I think it's good to listen and importantly, understand what they're trying to say and then try to communicate with each other. Because I feel like sometimes, you know, there can be miscommunications. I think you guys like if you're in a working in a team, it, we should work well together and listen to what other people have to say. Yeah. Thanks. And last but not least, Amanda Communications. Um, I personally think criticism is very important. And if um, a leader is not receiving criticism, I think there's something wrong with that. Cause like every everyone, no one is perfect. Everyone will receive criticism for what they're doing. And I think it's super important just to make sure to first of all, communicate with the person that is giving you criticism and under, really understand their intentions with the criticism and how, um, how they feel about it and where how did they develop the criticism and really just like understand the whole situation before making a decision on whether to change what is happening or what, what to do to solve the, not solve the criticism, but solve the problem at hand. And I just think, yeah, um, I just think talking to the person and making sure to get a second opinion and just talk to people on your team to really like solve the problem and see whether their criticism may be valid in the situation is important. Thank you. And our next question, please. To the VP of athletics candidates, what ideas do you have to increase attendance at sports events on less favorable days of the weeks for the less popular sports? And then let's start with Kaylee. I think that increasing attendance in sports games is really important because it really reflects off how the players really play in a game because if there's no people in the stands or in the crowd, then you won't really feel as hype in a game if with um, a stand full of crowds. 
And some ways that I would like to improve um, attendance in sports games would be like, you know, on TikTok, you see like all these fun games with like powder or like just having a mascot during sports games. And I could really amplify, amplify my ideas would be by trying to stay tr like trendy or like, um, like um, having, um, what's it called? Would be by just staying on top of like social media and really promote the sports games and really um, finding ways to make games are more exciting by having mascots, having activities, having science, and really you try to um, promote students to come into uh, sports games. And this way that in this way, it could really um, promote not the like um, the least popular sports. And um, thank you, Kaylee. Thank you. That's time. And then let's go on to Louie. So with increasing attendance at every sporting event, I would say that utilizing indie athletics is one of like one of our great ways of just trying to reach out to other students and say, hey, we have this going on at our school and just notify them about how each of our teams are doing. Just overall promoting our athletics using social media is also one good way of attracting, attracting activity towards those less popular sports. But also we could try to bring back uh, live streaming in a sense, just live stream on indie athletics, just trying to bring up, act, just bring up viewership even if they can't really attend on odd days of the week, they could still view games virtually. So I feel like that's another great way we could use technology to just increase activity, increase popularity for less popular sports. Thank you, Louis. And now on to Jenny. I think um, some of my ideas of increasing attendance at sports events on less favorite days of week is by, um, Next year, I really want to implement uh, athletics newspaper, which is it's like the Indie Insider newspaper, if you guys have seen at school, but it's like the athletics one, because even in the Indie Insider one, it does not have enough like what is it space to cover up all of athletics, which is sad because um, and plus Indie Insiders newspapers are com only coming out like only two is issues have came out. So even in that even in that section of the newspaper, right? It's like only a certain sport, which is sad because every sport have played. And it's sad to see that only one sport was be being recognized. So I was thinking if we have an athletic newspaper for all the sports each time, and it's constantly recycled, recycled for every sport event, and it's actually shared out throughout the school because um, at Indie Athletics, only a certain amount of people follow the account. And it's usually the people who are athletes because they want to be updated about athletic stuff. But if we were to actually broaden out our audience to everybody in the school and be able to like give out newspaper to everybody in the school about athletics, people will have having in mind about, oh, this, this team won this game. And the thing is um, increasing. Thank you, Jenny. Thanks. Alrighty, on to our next question. To everyone, you are now a part of the ASB cabinet and there is a conflict within the cabinet. How do you plan to resolve this type of internal issue? Let's start with the VP of special events candidates and let's start with Shally. So everyone says that communication is key and which it is, but I feel like it's a key to an extent because you need two, two parties to be down to listen to each other. You can't have one party like not communicate, right? But, but if it comes to that standard, then I feel that it's best for you to leave it professional and one person doing their job and the other doing their job because you're an ASB to do your job. You're an ASB to fulfill your purpose, right? And with conflict getting in the way, how are you going to do that? So I feel that if it comes to the extent where you guys can't communicate, then you guys need to be professional and do what you're supposed to be doing. Do what you're elected for doing. Thank you. Thank you, Shally. And now on to Akasha. Kind of off of what Shally said, professionalism is a very key part to all of this. And I feel like communication is also a big part. So if there were to be some sort of issue, I would try to work it out with that person and resolve it because we're all here 
in ASB for the same reasons, because we want to use our purpose to affect the school in a positive way. But if this person doesn't want to communicate or the situation keeps on going, you need to just keep doing your part. And so you guys can all tie together as a team in the end. But I feel like communication for everyone is key because as ASB, I feel like we should all have some sort of relationship that's positive in a way. Thank you, Akasha. And now let's go to Amanda. Okay, so first of all, as mentioned by the other candidates, I think communication is super, super important, but also putting your personal feelings behind because the conflict is about work. And um, if you just put your, if you have internal, um, if you have personal issues with the person, you won't be able to really see what you're doing wrong or what they're doing wrong because you're focused on the fact that you don't like that person. And so putting your feel, personal feelings behind is for also important and pinpointing what on parts of the disagreement whether you agree or disagree because there might be a, a bigger conflict and there will be parts that you agree and disagree so first of all doing that and just organizing all the said information and then just talking from there and even if the person is not willing to talk just making sure that you guys are not on super super bad turns and just try to continue to do your work is really important and now let's go to Prasida. um i think that there's like a big conflict in ASB or just like normal conflicts in general, I think it should just stay within ASB instead of like spreading out. So I think it's really important to be professional about it and try to deal with it inside of our team instead of like letting telling other people. So I think it's really important to communicate, understand with the understand what each other like, you know, are going through and just be really professional about it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And now let's go to Nuha. So immediately when I heard this question my mind goes back to speech and debate. Um, we would have this thing called a post-tournament meeting where if there were, let's say, like a conflict to arrive between both sides of the competition, they would kind of go to this meeting where we would sit down with our judge essentially and just figure out like, why were you, I guess, talking smack or like, what is the issue? And just stems from not being able to put aside your personal feelings and like your own opinions in a debate. So I think that that's some, that's a really good way to solve conflict in ASB. Like, of course, both sides have to abdicate for what their opinions are and what their uh, stances are on the conflict, but it's not going to happen perfectly or not. It's not going to happen well if you don't understand each other. If one side makes a really good point, you have to take that in and you have to be able to fully understand it. And I'm sure that as leaders of ASB being elected for ASB, I think that we all have those characteristics or we should have those characteristics to be able to find a middle ground where we all can mm. agree and sit down. Thank you. And now let's go to Drusella. I think by addressing the problem professionally and working through it before continuing anything else, because like the more you push it, the more like it builds up. And by also like finding the middle ground and try not to involve like people that are in the conflict and also just um, working through it and like just know that in the end, you're like there for like ASB, you're not there for like any other personal conflicts. Thanks, Gisela. Now let's go to Chuk. Um, I definitely agree with everyone else when it comes to professionalism, but I also think it's not just only the two people or like the people that do have conflict, but everyone as a team, because the whole reason why it's a conflict in ASB is because you, um, you put your personal like feelings in front of your work and I feel like it's kind of biased if it's just two people going at each other and I feel like everyone in their cabinet like I don't want them it's not like we're intruding into the um the problem but more of like try to find the middle ground and um try to understand where this problem is coming from and not pinpointing it but more of understanding and reasoning with both sides to um find a solution and yeah thank you Chuk. And now let's go to Amy. So um, obviously if the conflict is personal and has nothing to do with like the work with ASB, I think it should be the responsibility of the ASB member to put their personal feelings aside and to still be able to work and do their ASB responsibilities while the issue is there. Cause obviously personal, I feel like personal issues shouldn't be involved with ASB at all. But if it was like a work related issue, it would typically fall under two categories. So it'd be like an issue caused by miscommunication or an issue caused by like differing views or differing opinions. And when it comes to miscommunication, I think it's really important to like find the root of the problem because often 
uh, issues can be like blown out of proportions and they could seem a lot bigger than they actually are. So I think just by finding like the main cause and the root, it'll be a lot easier to resolve the whole thing. And then if it's like uh, an issue with differing opinions, as everyone said, finding a middle ground and compromising is I think the best way to resolve that. Thank you, Amy. And now let's go on to Louis. So I think when trying to go about and trying to resolve conflict is that you, you just got to take it professionally, professionally and just not really like take things to heart. Just try to just try to calm things down so that everybody around can just go in and communicate with each other effectively and just trying to find once again that middle ground, just trying to figure out a way that we could all work together towards one goal. And also we shouldn't necessarily just be turning this into some whole drama sort of incident. Because, of course, we don't want this kind of conflict getting out to the student population because if the student population would hear any issues going on with ASB, that would kind of result in lack of confidence and not to like each individual person that is necessarily involved in conflict, but that's going to affect ASB as a whole. So I feel like taking it professionally and just keeping matters and conflict within ASB, we just work together in tandem just to allow us to work all effectively. Thanks, Louie. And now let's go to Jenny. I think in general for conflicts, you just got to confront, you just got to confront it as a whole, as ASB. It's not, the, it's not just the two person who's having a conflict. You just got to sit down and talk about it and confront each other about what's wrong and why is it happening. And if it's like some kind of immature or like childish problem, right, then honestly, just like, um, do it deal with it professionally like everyone said like you got to deal with it professionally but like it's a certain level how professional high school kids can be and I think um in a way you have to you can't go full professional but you can't go full immaturely and just deal with it like the middle of professional and immature and I don't know what that word is called but just in the middle you just can't do it all the way on this side or all the way on this side and plus we are co-workers in ASB we are not friends out of ASB, you could be friends, we're not friends, but we are co-workers in ASB. And I think that's really important. If you have a conflict, really depending on views, right? And I personally think that I usually get in a lot of, um, I usually have different views from other people. And I think that's really important because I will argue my way to for my view. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Jenny. Yeah, that's time. Thanks. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> Next question, please. To the VP of Student Outreach Candidates, other than improvements to honorary eagles, what ideas do you plan to bring to campus? Alrighty, let's start with Prasida. Oh, okay, so one of my main goals for next year besides honor eagles is to create like an indie spotlight page where like it gives recognition for school, like for clubs and students. So it's really similar to what Jenny did with like the indie athletics where like they gave recognition to like some sports and like how they won their like um, competitions or games. So it's like when clubs do like really big events, like for example, beneficial the other day or like some really smart students like, you know, who win uh, big awards for robotics and et cetera. I feel like those people really need recognition at our school sometimes. Sometimes. So I think trying to like give them the spotlight is like my main goal for next year. And besides that, I also want to create like welcome cards for transfer students and just create like a community where people feel like they are together and just make our school really inclusive next year and have like a career day, career fair kind of idea where bringing in professionals from like different fields and giving students like a more idea, like a like a more idea of what they want to do in the future. Uh, also like honor certificates for students, something that we did in our previous years and like just to make sure that people feel inclusive in our community. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Basita. And now on to Nuha. So one thing that I'm really passionate about implementing is something that uh, was initiated in previous outreach years, which is the series of events called Together We Rise. I thought that that was such an innovative and such a uh, such a really cool thing to bring to campus essentially because it allowed for students and staff and admin to kind of come together and have the sense of unity to advocate for issues on campus such as um, Asian hate crimes and for the struggles of being a first generation immigrant. So I think that if we can bring that back to campus, we overall can bring a new light to independence, one where we are not only celebrating each other's diversity, but we're also learning about each other. Another 
another thing that I really, really want to do as your next VP of Student Outreach is bring in the opportunity for clubs to essentially advocate and speak to staff and admin about club benefits and funding and trusts. Basically, clubs would be able to come on to uh, a panel or they would be able to kind of talk to admin and staff and have the ability to um, essentially get fund get funding from staff and admin. The other thing is I want to initiate Thank you, Nuha. um I want to initiate Thank you, Nuha. <laughs> Thanks guys. Um so we have like two minutes left. So we're gonna take a quick intermission and then I'll text and chat when like all the footing is downloaded. So yeah, we can leave for now, just like we enter later. Thanks, guys. To the VP of Special Events candidates, tell us about an IHS event that you wish to improve upon and how you plan to do so. And let's start with Akasha. An example of an IHS event that I would want to improve on would be like our school dances or homecoming, for example. And I want to make it so that people feel more joined together. Although COVID is a big thing, we can try to find one way to connect people more because I heard from other people's opinions that it felt as if it was the space was too large or people weren't really that connected or I feel like there was a lot of groups and like clicks there. So I want to try to find ways that maybe get the crowd more hype and get people to feel more together in a sense so they can have an awesome high school experience. Thank you, Kasha, and let's go to Shally. So I feel like this shouldn't apply to just one event, but for all events. So you should do that by finding an innovative, innovative way to engage audience because the purpose of having these events is to have fun, right? That can be done with having more of a variety of student performances, such as like for rallies, right? You can, uh, you, kind of have to put yourself in the audience perspective and question what will make this event memorable. I feel that events are lacking spirit, especially considering the fact that nearly half of our school was never really experienced like event, like such as BOTC and multi due to the circumstances of COVID. I feel that events should be a social anxiety free zone where everyone is comfortable and feeling inclusive. And I wanna break that stigma. I want to endorse more promotions to show them a glimpse of what fun really is at events and show them. Thank you, Shelly. Alrighty, sorry about that. To everyone, tell us about a past experience that highlights your leadership and reinforces why you are the best candidate for the job. Alrighty, let's start with Amy. So um, rather than a specific past experience that highlights my leadership, I have sort of more of a collection. So over the past two years, being an ASB, so being the only candidate with two years of ASB experience, I've managed to collect a significant amount of experiences that would help me be the best president I can for ASB. And um, obviously, since I've had a lot of ASB experience, I know like the ins and outs of ASB, how ASB works as, you know, finance and records, sophomore year and vice president this year or junior year. So I think it's just uh, because I have a lot of ASP experience, I'm like close with all the clubs and I'm, you know, uh, and a lot of the students know that I'm already like an ASP representative. So I think in that way with like my experience with clubs and the rest of the students on campus, I would be, I would be able to fulfill my job as a president pretty well. Thanks Amy and let's go to Akasha. <clears throat> um, kind of like how Amy said, I can't say there's one specific thing, but I could gather like past experiences. So I would say me running for class office for all of my two years, so my freshman and sophomore year, and even in middle school, or joining things like cheer or track. And all of those experiences, I show people that I have the positivity, no matter how bad the experience is. I feel like positive, like thought will bring positive positive experience. So I feel like this can make me the best candidate for this because I always have that bright, happy mood. And no matter what the situation is, I feel like we could gain something great from that. So I want to show people that as long as you be positive and think the best, you can get a best experience out of it. And I always want to motivate everybody to think that they have a good, happy purpose there. So yeah. Alrighty, let's go on to Jenny. I think past experiences that highlight my leadership job is that um, there's like, since athletics was like, athletics was like stopped during quarantine. And then after it was continued, it was hard to get back to actually like the real athletics while we were in quarantine. So I think 
um definitely like if we and the thing is uh just generally if you just um I think uh, some of my past experience that highlight my leadership and job and why I'm the best candidate for VP of athletics is because I've been athletics for a year and like because of quarantine many things were stopped and because the athletic director was switched to Yanchik um athletics itself is not like a TA for the athletic director anymore it's more like you have to build up your own stuff to do or else no one's going to give you anything and basically you do nothing if you just sit there and don't find anything to do so if you just actually, um, and many things were started this year, like Athletic Senate, it's literally still, we're literally still building the foundation. If if basically, if my experience in Athletic Senate was taken out, then the next um, athletics have to start. Alrighty, let's go on to Nuha. So one, two past experiences that I can think that really highlight why I'm the best candidate for this job is one, I was the lead coordinator for Honorary Eagles this year. So coming from the program, I have so many different ideas as to how I can make the orientation itself much more planned and organized. Not only that, but I really felt like I was responsible for the way that the freshmen and the sophomores this year got their first uh, impression of independence. And I think that through that, I was able to really initiate a positive uh, campus impression on them that they were actually happy to be there. They really, really enjoyed the orientation. That's the vibe that I got off of that. And another experience that I really feel like makes me qualified for this job is being your school site uh, student representative. And through that, I was able to advocate for so many different things. I advocated for a sexual health curriculum um, that Mr. Berg is actually amending with Kaiser Permanente. And through that, we were able to make it more inclusive to sexual trafficking, to grooming, and to so many different things. And I I feel like through that, I'm properly able to advocate for students' voices and make campus a better environment and overall implement a better campus culture for so many different students, which is why I believe I'm the best candidate for this job. Thank you, Nuha. And now let's go on to Chuk. Um, With my previ- previous experience in ASB, to me, I feel like um, even though each position is like dedicated to a certain thing, it's only to a certain extent and like majority of it is it comes down to teamwork because you have to put together what your position does and like it relates to other people's positions and also like how we do like rallies and like big events and I feel like my previous um, leadership positions when it comes to leading big groups like um, president of Girl Scouts um, being a supervisor um, in training at work I feel like I have a lot of experience being able to not only like lead people to do stuff but also communicate with not only adults but like um people my age and um, being able to find a middle ground and see what my what my experience can do with their experience to make like everything work together because obviously you know I can't run a whole entire boba shop by myself and I can't like you know get all these girls together and like like make sure they do their badges by like only myself I have to be able to communicate with adults and also um, uh, the people I'm working with at the same time. Thank you, Juk. And now let's go on to Shally. So one specific example that highlights my leadership and what makes me the best candidate for special events is our recent HOKO rally. So I stayed up to like 10 p.m. at school painting our posters and taking them home as well, making big number signs, planning out our quad day while still having volleyball practice. My dedication for this school means a lot to me. It means a lot to the point where even me losing a campaign last year as president still made me want to benefit my school. So that's why I become an, became an AC. And this is why I'm running for special events because I see potential and change in our school. Thank you. Lovely. Now let's move on to Kaylee. Some things that highlight um, about my leadership position would be being class office for the past three school years. It has really taught me how to take responsibilities and take an initiative about um, working as a team and um, doing work. And I have been a part of uh, sports teams and I can recognize things that uh, students have liked and disliked about a program and can really implement the ideas that I have to enhance our sports program. And I've also been a part of like Helping Hands, which is a club that really helps the less fortunate. And we, I actually like helped came up with an an event that we did in the past would be by making bag lunches. And we just donated them to our local um, shelter. And I can really use these experience and when dealing with 
my position as VP of Athletics because I've gained so much knowledge and experience from being from having past leadership roles, and I know I can fulfill fulfill these ideas and um, goals as VP of Athletics. Thank you. Thank you, Kaylee. And now on to Prasida. Um, a past experience that really shows why I'm a best candidate for this position is when I ran for this position last year, but I didn't make it. Obviously, that made me rethink a lot of things like was I doing this for the title or did I actually really care about the position. So I realized that I really cared about the students in our community and I really want to do something for them. Since it's going to be my last year I just want to make a lot of memories and make sure everybody else also has fun in the school. So when I didn't get the position I tried to do other things in school where I can show my leadership. I was a team leader for honorary Eagles I did clubs like UNICEF ACS. And I really tried to have the best time I could ever in high school. And this year, I just want to try again. So I don't regret, you know, when I become an adult, like why didn't I apply? That kind of thing. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. And now on to Gisela. Being in class office for like two years, like as secretary, especially during COVID, it really allowed me to challenge myself. And like from those challenges has given me like experience on how to work on school events, especially with a team. And I think that has set good, like a foundation, especially for this um, position as finance and records. So that's why I think I'd be the best candidate for this job. Thanks, Gisela. And now let's go to Louie. So for me, I'm a very sympathetic and any leadership position that I take is a position that I feel very passionate in. So one uh, past memory that I have is I remember going in as an um, honorary eagle, um, just an honorary eagle mentor. And I went in and I just wanted to do that because I feel how the freshmen are feeling, right? I, I know how they're going through and I wanna be that friendly face they see as they're going in. And me taking on this position for athletics, it's really something I feel passionate about. And I really feel how other athletes are feeling. I really, I take their issues that they have with any, with any problems they have in regards to athletics to heart. I, I relate to them. I take it very personally and I just really want to help them and just really try to solve their problem on a personal basis. And I feel like that would just help me become more passionate in my work. And it's like, try to find some, a work that you feel passionate in. So you don't necessarily work a day in your life. Thank you. And lastly, we have Amanda. Um, okay, so collectively from my past two years in high school, I have done a lot of clubs. Um, I've, I've actually had five leadership positions in different clubs, and I've done class office and sports. And I think specifically for my position, being involved in clubs and just like actively participating in them is really important. And what make, and it's what makes me the best candidate because I understand what's happening in clubs and how they can communicate better. Uh, furthermore, more through my experience, I feel like I've learned so much leadership, um, leadership skills such as communication and time management and just how to work well in a team. And also it's just given me, um, just given me thought, like, I don't know how to explain this, but it just makes me want to be more involved because I enjoy doing um, leadership and just being involved in our community a lot more. Thank you. And that wraps up our ASB form for the 2022 to 2023 school year. Be sure to cast your vote this Friday, February 11th. All current freshmen, sophomores, and juniors are eligible to vote. More instructions will be sent directly to your school email on Friday. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not election. Oh, yeah. That's election day. On Friday, February 11th. Yes. Be sure to check out Uncle Sam, the Independence YouTube channel to see the election forum and other really cool resources that will be posted there. Thank you. Any questions, email us at independence.asb at gmail.com or DM us directly at Indian Activities on Instagram.